So I will try to summarize the story. So there is a place in uh, um, um, in um, Jerusalem. So the place is called the Sheep Market. And in that Sheep Market, there is a pool. So they named the pool Bethesda. You listen carefully to this very beautiful um, story. So this pool is called Bethesda. So what's more important in this pool is that every certain time in the year, once every year, the angel from the Lord always come into this water and steer this water up, this pool. And anybody that steps into the water, the moment the angel steers the water up, get healed of any infirmity, of any disease, of any sickness that he or she is having. So because of that, there are a whole lot of sick people. I can imagine the whole lot of sick people that they lay beside the pool waiting for the angel to come and steer the pool at a certain time. But there is this an old man. And on this faithful day, our Lord Jesus Christ was passing by the pool. But there is this certain man that our Lord Jesus Christ saw and told him, he said, hey, man, uh, uh, do you want to be healed? Because it's, it's obvious the man is sick, couldn't walk, was very sick. And Jesus asked him, he said, do you want him to be healed? Then the man started saying a lot of stories that, oh, yeah. I, I have been here for so many years and um, uh, because I'm so sick, I cannot move my body. I can get into the water when the angel comes and nobody assists me. It's just like the same way in the world. You know, sometimes you go to school and they want to write an exam and you keep on saying, ah, this exam is so difficult and nobody is assisting me. I don't even have anybody to help me. I don't even have anybody to teach me this question. We all have a situation in our life like that. Sometimes the situation may not be even academics. The situation could be even in our sports, in what we do in our leisure time. Oh, maybe you are a dancer, maybe you are a footballer, you maybe you're a swimmer, you go swimming, or you play badminton, or you play whatever game you're playing, or whatever team you are joining, and um, there is this tax, there is this assignment given to you, there is this tax that you don't know how to do, and nobody is assisting you. So we all have situations like that in our life, right? So you can quite go with me on what this guy was facing. This innocent guy was very, very ill, and nobody is helping him. You understand? That's the cruel world in which we are. So this particular day, Jesus now come to him and said, okay, what's the problem? And he begin to narrate a story. You know, it's just like if I just come to you and say, oh, Joseph, why are you not so happy? And you begin to narrate a lot of story. Oh yeah, my mom did this, my dad did this, my uncle did this. Oh, I didn't do well in school or I was sad or something or something or something. And you gave a whole lot of excuses. That's what this man was doing that same day with Jesus. So Jesus was tired of his excuses and he said, okay, no problem, get up and walk. And the Bible recorded it that the same time that man got up and began to walk. And that time was a Sabbath day. So that's where we're going to stop. That's, that's the lesson we're going to learn. Yeah, we know about what then happened after the Sabbath day, what happened when people want to crucify Jesus for he healed on the Sabbath day. But we, we, we're not going to talk about that today. What we want to talk about today is the pool called Beth Bethesda and how this um, man was he good? Now, I want to ask some few questions. Now you know everything. Now you know the story. You, you know you know everything about what happened on that same day. Now, I want to ask some questions quickly. Who knows the reason why? You know, Jesus asked the, 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 the man, uh, do you want to be healed? But the answer the man gave to Jesus was different. You know, 
The question that was asked is, do you want to be healed? It means, yes, I want to be healed. No, I don't want to be healed. But instead of the man to answer the yes or no question, he started narrating a lot of stories. So I want to ask, what makes this man not to answer the question, but to be giving histories, to be talking a lot of stories? Who have an idea of the reason why this man did not answer this question, yes or no question, very simple question, but rather decide to be talking stories? Can somebody tell me the reason why, if you, if you have an idea? Because he wants to gain Jesus' pity. Oh, I love that. Wonderful. He wants to gain Jesus' pity. Cool, Abraham. I love that. Who else again? What other raising? Um, do you think the man begins to narrate stories instead of answering a question of yes or no answer? Who else can try? You can try, you can try. Who else? Who else? Tomika, are you there? Okay, Tomika never showed up. Okay, good. Um, Joseph, you have an you have you have you have an idea. Okay, so Abraham, you are very correct. You're very very correct. He wants to gain Jesus' pity. He 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 he. Number one, he didn't see Jesus as somebody that can heal him. You see, it's it is it, just like. When you are in the hospital, you won't be in the hospital. And the doctor come and say, oh, how are you? And you don't know there is a doctor. Huh? You will not be expecting him to, to, to put some telescope on your, on your chest. No, you would think it's your friend, right? Because you don't know there is a doctor. And you will want to explain what happened why you were in the hospital, what actually happened to you, you will want to explain so that the person will pity you the same way Abraham said. He just want Jesus to have a pity, to, 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 to pity him in his condition. So number one thing is that, and I would like you to put that down, he did not know that Jesus is a healer. He did not know that Jesus is the savior. He did not know that Jesus is Lord. He did not know that Jesus can heal. He did not know that Jesus can save. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what Jesus is. He doesn't know what Jesus is. He was just, he was thinking that Jesus was just holding up a person, you know? He was just thinking that, oh, Jesus is like Shay. Shay that always talk too much, you know? He was that, oh, Jesus is like Peter. Peter that always asks a lot of questions. He just like, oh, Jesus is like, one of our stubborn guys in the area. That was what or what he perceived to be who was asking him question. He did not know that he's the healer, number one. Then, because of that, he couldn't answer the right question. Then he wanted Jesus to pity him because a lot of people has been coming. They've been asking him. Why they are passing by? Hey, man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and he has been explaining the same thing. Every time they keep on coming. Hey, why are you here? Oh, yeah, I'm here because nobody can help me. I want to be healed, but nobody can help me. I've been here for 36 years. I've been here for donkey years. I've been here for this. That is the reason why a lot of us, we always complain. You too, you always complain. Me too, I always complain. Whenever we have situations, we always complain. We always want to talk to somebody the same way this guy wants to talk to someone. So he was happy when Jesus, but the question that Jesus asked was different. So he couldn't understand what Jesus was asking, right? He couldn't understand. He was like, a lot of people have been asking me what brought me here. But you, this guy, just came and be asking, and you started asking, um, do I want to be healed? Okay, don't let me be so saucy. Don't let me, don't let me be uh, uh, um, the stubborn. Don't let me be, be rude to you. Okay, I will tell you the same thing I've been telling people. So it is important 
you understand who God is. Because when you understand who God is, you will be able to answer the right questions that have been posed to you by God or by challenges. See, if you don't understand who God is, I want you tonight to understand that you need to have the knowledge of who God is. Just as I'm going to ask many of you now, I'm going to ask you. In fact, don't let me, let me start asking. So I want to ask you a question. And as our callings, I would like you to tell me sincerely who you think or what exactly is the answer. So the question is, who do you think? I'm not saying who do your parent think or who do your pastor think God is? But personally, be truthful with me. Who do you think is God? I want you to know, I want you, I want to know that. Who do you think is God? Who do you think is God? So I'm going to ask you. I will start from Sharon. So Sharon, from your personal opinion, from don't tell me what people say about God. Tell me what do you think or what do you know about God? Sharon. Sharon. God is the creator of the universe. Okay. Is that how you know about God? Sharon, is that all you know about God? He's the one who created us human beings and he's the one who created all the stuff on earth. Okay. So you see God as a creator. He created everything. He created heavens. He created earth. He created us. And he created every damn thing in the world, right? That's who, whenever I say God, that's the picture that comes to your mind, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Sharon, lovely. I love that. Good. Abraham, if I ask you, who do you think God is? Can you tell me? The person who creates everything and preserves everything. He created everything and he does what? Preserves everything. Preserves everything. Hmm. So that's so whenever you hear God, the only the thing that comes to your mind is, is the creator and the preserver of everything. Right? Good. Thank you. So Joseph, if you hear God, what comes to your mind? He's the creator of the um world, and he's basically God is our like a family. God is what? Like family. To God us. is like family. Okay. Is that all? And he um forgives us for all our sins. And he heals us from our sins. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Is that all? Yes. Okay. So. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Joseph, uh, I'm come with another perspective, say God is the creator of all things, and also is a family, and he heals us of all us. I love that, I love that. Good, thank you very much, Joseph. Um, Moyo, Moyo, I don't think Moyo is in this class, so... I don't think Moyo is in this class. Tomike. Tomike. I don't think Tomike too is in this class. I think um, what I'm going to do to the two of them is that I will... No, don't let me make a decision yet. I'll make a decision some other time. So, okay. So this is lovely. This is lovely. I love all the answers that I received. It's wonderful. Now, you see that majority of us knows that God is the creator of everything. But I want you to understand that it is what you know God is, is what you're going to treat him with. For example, 
if you know that I'm a doctor, you will always come to me when you are sick. Am I right or wrong, Joseph? If you know that I'm a doctor, you will always come to me when you are sick. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Oh, good. So, if you don't know that God can heal, you cannot pray to God to heal you. If you don't know that God can give you prosperity, you cannot pray to God that God should bless you. If you don't know that God can give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you cannot pray to God to give you that. It's only what you know about God that you can go to God to request from. Now, let me tell you something. I want to tell you who God is. God is more than the creator of the whole world. God is more than being a family. God is more than being a preserver. God is bigger than everything. God is a healer. God can deliver you. God can give you salvation. God can, can, can prosper you. God can give you peace. God can give you good health. God can give you money. God can give you a job. God can heal the dead. God can give you life. God can do a whole lot of things in your life. And there is nothing God cannot do. So God is bigger than whatever you think he is. So I want you to understand that tonight. That there is no problem you can have that God cannot solve. No, not even one problem. There is no problem. There is nothing you can ask God for that God will not provide for you. He has everything. And he can give everything. There is nothing good that God cannot give you. Everything he can give you. So have that idea. Have that mindset. Whenever you hear God. So now, do you understand who God is now? He's bigger than everything. He can do anything. And he has everything in his ability. So God can be your doctor. God can be your teacher. God can be your friend. God can be your companion. God can be your parents. God can be your friend. God can be anything you want him to be in your life. So do you understand that concept of who God is? So he's bigger than just being a creator or a preservant or is a family. He's bigger than that. Yes, he's the creator of heavens and the earth. Yes, you're right that he is a family. Yes, you're right that he preserves all things. You're very right. But much more he is. Is much more than that. And I want you to understand that. And once you understand that there is nothing you can ask God that he will not be able to give to you. So, Joseph, is there anything you will ask God and God will not give to you? No. Nothing. Abraham, can God heal a sick person? Yes. Abraham, can God raise the dead? Yes. Sharon, can God teach you some things you don't understand? Yes, sir. Sharon, can God be your family? 
Yes, sir. Sharon, can God be your friend? Yes, sir. Now you understand that God can be everything we want him to be. So the problem about this man, he did not know that God can heal. That was the reason why he was not answering the question. But thank God, thank God that God understand and God just said, stand up and walk. So the same way, if we don't know who God is, we'll be missing a lot. So this time, I always want you to have this idea. Whenever you have a problem or you have a situation and it seems as if nobody is helping, do you know what you can do? Call on God. You go to your room, close your eyes and pray to God. You talk to God in a way that he will listen to you. There is no way in which you cannot pray. You can say, oh, daddy, daddy God, um, I want to write an exam tomorrow. Oh, God, help me. Teach me what to write. You give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding, God. God, when I go home, when I go to uh, the, the exam or tomorrow, Father, let me remember everything I've read, Lord. Father, Lord, bring to my remembrance everything I've read. For in Jesus' name, you have prayed. And that is very important. I keep telling you in this class that there is nothing that is bigger than prayer. Prayer answers all things. Even if you want to have a good friend, you pray for a good friend, God will provide for you. Say, oh God, all my friends are bad. God, I want you to change my friend for me. I want to have a good friend. I want good people to come and be my friend. In Jesus' name I pray. You will see, good people will come to be your friend. Anything you want, have learned how to ask God. Even before asking your parents, learn how to ask God first. Before asking anybody, before asking your parents, before asking anybody, learn how to ask God first. Because it is very important. God can give you everything because he has, he has everything. So do you understand that? Hello? Do you understand that? Who is on the line? Joseph, Abraham, Sharon. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Oh, good. 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 So I want to ask some few questions. Yeah. Now, I will start from Sharon. So, Sharon, what is the name of the pool that we're talking about today? Sharon. 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 Tim Sharon is not there. So Abraham, can you answer that? What is the name of the pool that we're talking about today? Bethesda. 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 Good, 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 good. Joseph, I want you to tell me um, um, I want you to tell me what did Jesus ask the man at the pool of Beth Bethesda? Um, Jesus asked, will thou be made whole? Jesus asked, will thou be made whole? Good. So back to you, Abraham. So what was the answer of this man to Jesus? Abraham, what was the answer that this man gave to Jesus? <clears throat> Sorry, sir, my internet was um, going. Um, the answer he said was, 
um he has been there for a long time and anytime he tries to get into the pool someone always goes ahead of him hmm. and is the answer a correct answer no okay so thank you thank you now back to joseph joseph why did he give a wrong answer joseph why did this man give a wrong answer joseph um because because the jews sought more to kill jesus no that's not the answer i gave you the answer think about it i told you the reason why this man answered jesus wrongly why It seems you are not listening. The reason why this man answered Jesus wrongly is because he did not know that Jesus can heal. He did not know who Jesus is. He did not know. He was thinking that he's just one of those people that always ask him a lot of questions. That's the reason why he answered Jesus wrongly. He did not know that Jesus can heal. Now, do you get the answer now? Yes. Oh, good. Go, go. So, yeah, and that's what we'll learn today. And um, this is where we'll be stopping today.